In this video, I'm going to show the basics of doing a focus stack in Zarene Stacker, my preferred focus stacking program. I believe it make it creates the best quality stacks, meaning it does give you the best detail with the fewest artifacts with the least amount of work. And I think its retouching tools are excellent. And uh, certain other features are, are really important. Uh, here we have five files which I've processed as per a pre previous video. They were enhanced uh, with AI denoise and details and so on. I'm going to drag those into Zarene Stacker. Switching to that, we see it's got five files and it's loaded them up. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say align and stack all with DMAP. I pretty much use DMAP. Pmax is another algorithm which uh, I think uh, generally results in a little too much, um, well, some effects I don't quite like, but it is very useful occasionally in dark areas or in edges. But basically, I'm going to say align and stack all DMAP, and that's going to take us about two minutes. So let's look at what's going on here and talk a bit while it does that. Um, it's going to uh, do, it's, there's several stages to this, and at, when it's mostly done, it's going to ask us about a contrast threshold, which I'll discuss in a minute. In this case, I've got five frames. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, you c don't stack frames you don't need. It's going to confuse the algorithm and maybe generate more artifacts. So in this case, it's pretty simple. I focused down real close here, and I told the camera to, sh to shoot as many frames as it needed until infinity. And that's what I got. And since the Fujifilm GFX 100S or 2 doesn't actually get an, a frame at infinity properly. You always want to shoot an infinity frame manually. All right, here we are. We got contrast threshold. What is that? Uh, it's it's really important actually. Otherwise, you can get excessive artifacts. You want to basically mask off the areas. I'm dragging the slider here that have essentially little or no um, fine detail. Uh, that would be the sky or the clouds or things like that dark shadow areas. The issue here is that um, I'm, I know I'm going to mask off about the top two-thirds of this image with uh, the infinity frame. It's it's going to cover, I'm just going to wipe out that whole area with the final infinity focus frame. So the contrast threshold may not be too important here. My concern is more about what's happening down in these dark shadows and maybe in this snow over on the mountain and I want detail in that snow, but I know I'm going to overwrite it. So in this case, it does. it's not going to matter a whole lot. So I'm just going to crank that down, go for maximum detail in the, the foreground areas here, except for these, these shadows. Not too, not too important here. Click OK, and it's going to continue. Um, part of any good focus stack is you're pretty much going to have to uh, use the tools to do some retouching. And even if there's no obvious issues, the retouching can give you better quality because you're not, essentially not mixing frames that don't have to be mixed. So as a landscape photographer, if you shoot your infinity frame properly, kind of all this stuff that's been blacked out on above from like this point where I'm waving the mouse all the way to the distance, one frame does that the best. Maybe, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's from this hiker out here. But pretty much one frame has covered this entire distance area from you know, everywhere from these these cliffs to the far infinity. So your, your first step in retouching is just going to be to uh, um, brush over that entire area at distance. And that way there's no conflict between any of the frames and you get the, the ideal results. And it gets trickier when you have frames that are overlapping, like the beginning of this rock down here to the end of that rock down there versus this. Uh, if there's a retouch required, then that's going to take more time and care. All right, it's all done um, with the stack, and you can see over on the left we have DMAP01. I mean, that's the DMAP algorithm and the first stack. Sometimes you'll, you'll want to stack more than once using a different contrast threshold because you'll find that a certain contrast threshold may give you ugly hal halos on certain edges. And it takes a little experience, but what I've resorted to now is I'll just run a batch file, which it also supports and tell it to do you know, 5%, 20%, 40%, 60%, and then it just generates four of these, DMAP 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can load them up in Photoshop and just see which one has the fewest artifacts and then maybe fine-tune from there. That is super important because 
if you don't do that, you're going to spend a lot of time retouching when maybe you could have just used a different contrast threshold to greatly reduce the number of artifacts you had. It's not going to do anything for motion, but it may do things for like near far with like a branch against the distance. Here we don't have any of that. It's just these rocks. But if we had a, a tree sticking up right here, sticking up in the scene, we're going to have artifacts and it's going to be some work to, to retouch that sort of thing. The other thing you can get you is the motion, like these clouds are moving from one frame to another. And that again is why you're going to retouch and use this last frame, number five, over here to um, wipe out and use that frame overall as far distance. But that's a subject of another video. Now, okay, so, okay, so when it's done, assuming you're satisfied, you, you probably have done some retouching, but you're going to check save. Not You can save project, which is a good idea, but I usually throw them away once I'm sure I've got it. But I'm going to save the output image, and uh, I like to pick a name that's based off the first file, so I can chop off this other stuff, and I just say DGA 0156 S5, and then I give it a name like view from Mount Kines Southeast, and I save, and now I have my output file, which I can open in Photoshop. And that file you'd want to then open in Photoshop and just look for well how do I do do I have artifacts do I have motion you know what's going on but let's take a look at that without going into that I'm going to set this to 200 percent so we can see it more easily and then I'm going to go over to where these hikers were these hikers are moving so you can see we've got a pretty mangled looking hiker there and that person's buddy over here uh, we don't have any good results there Fortunately, this kind of retouch is super easy. You'll find the frame in this rocky area that is the sharpest. You just paint in there, including the shadows of this person, and ditto for this area back here. And it'll all work out perfect uh, uh, with very little effort. So that type of retouch is super easy. Same thing for this person here. Pretty much one frame is going to do it. You just brush over this, boop, and the pipe will pop, pop, pop back into and look normal. Uh, so this is actually a very easy focus stack. I have very few worries about retouching this, and it turned out fantastic. Um, you don't want to take a long time to take this, because even like these little shadows, see down here, this little nubbin on the rock, um, those shadows move pretty quickly. So that's why you want automated focus stacking whenever you can get it. All right, that's enough for this video.